All right, what is up YouTube? It is Rob Stark and in today's video, I wanted to go over my rankings for every individual brawler, specifically in how they do in Bounty. And what I did is I ranked every brawler on every map in Bounty and then I averaged those rankings and that gave me the overall rankings for Bounty for each brawler. I basically thought this might be a more fair way because I think one thing I found in Brawl Stars, and I'm sure you found this too, is that depending on the map, you know, different brawlers are better. Each brawler has certain strengths, you know, depending on the map. So I thought it might be more fair to just average the ranking on every map total and then put that together to get an overall ranking. So first I'm gonna go over the overall rankings and then I'm gonna go over briefly each map and why they favor certain brawlers more than others. All right, so first we're gonna start with the overall ranking and I think one of the things I found is there's a clear one and two, and you can probably switch these pretty easily, but I think these are probably the clear one and two, and that is Brock. I have Brock at one, and then I have Crow at two. I think Brock has been really good since the update. He basically is one of the most powerful brawlers in the game right now, and I think that makes him great at Bounty. One of the things I found in Bounty is since there's no central objective that's keeping you to a certain part of the map is you find a lot of long range brawlers are really becoming strong because it makes it one it makes it hard for people to approach you as you know they can hit you from you know far away and then it also makes them hard to run away because if for instance if they back up to their spawn and then you have to go to their spawn to kill them well they're just going to spawn back and they can shoot you for a long time so one of the things in bounty is people end up destroying cover and a lot of long range brawlers are really good so that's why brock is number one he has a really, really long range. He does a good amount of damage and his super also does a lot of damage. It destroys walls. It can hit multiple people. It's hard to escape from if you aim it well. And then Crow at number two, he's just overall still very strong. He does, a, his poison can be really annoying, makes it hard to heal up. And he's a really good complement to those long range brawlers as it keeps the enemy constantly in mid to low health and it makes it a lot easier for them to finish them off. Sometimes the long range brawler, it's hard to get people down from full health right away or very fast. So Crow really helps with that. And then after that, sort of in the three to seven range, this is probably the second tier. These are all really good brawlers um, and they're good on pretty much most maps. And these ones I found is I have it three, it goes Barley and then it's Colt and then Dynamite and then Piper and Ricochet. So these are mostly long range brawlers and then also the two throwers. Uh, I think you probably have seen this too, throwers are everywhere right now, they're really good. Barley and Dynamite both very good, they're great at area denial, they're great in like snake pair and outlaw camp as far as area denial and then also making sure there's no enemies in the bushes. Uh, their supers are both very powerful, they can do a lot of damage. It's hard to avoid them sometimes, they're great at pushing enemies into others, they're great at punishing any grouped up enemies. Um, and then the other three brawlers are just long range and can do a lot of damage. I think one of the reasons Colt is ranked higher than Piper um, is basically Colt is more versatile. I found that he's, I think Piper maybe is a little better on the very long range maps, but Colt is better overall. He's pretty decent on pretty much every map, whereas I find Piper is not so good on a couple maps. Um, and then Ricochet I think is just a lesser version of Colt basically. He is pretty much just a little bit less damage, um, but he does have a little more range, so it's a little give and take. And then after that, it sort of just goes pretty evenly. It goes Spike at eight, and then Shelly at nine, Bo at 10, um, and then I'll go over those. So those pretty much, you're starting to get into the mid-range brawlers, um, and they're not as versatile. These Pretty much from eight down, it's more map dependent. These brawlers are either gonna be pretty good or to really good on some maps or they're not good at all. So a lot of these sort of vary and then it just goes El Primo at 11 and Bullet 12. I think that's especially true with them. You find them really good on maps like Snake Prairie and Outlaw Camp and horrible on maps like Shooting Star, um, stuff like that. And then Mortis coming in at 13. And then you start getting to more mid-range brawlers with Nita at 14, Tara at 15, um, Pam is at 16, um, and then Jesse's at 17 and Poco's 18. I think Jesse really took a big hit past recently with the health buffs to Brock, Colt, Dynamite, um, other brawlers now the same health as her. 
And then also those throwers making it hard for Jesse to keep her turrets up for long. And same with all the long range, it's hard for Jesse to really compete with those people. Same with Poco and Pam, they sort of don't deal enough damage. Uh, it's hard for them to deal a lot of damage at once and people don't really group up as much sometimes in bounty since there's no objective that they're going for. Whereas like in Smash and Grab, you know they're going to be going for gems, stuff like that. Uh, Nita and Tara, just not as good options these days. There's not a lot of uh, cover these days. It gets blown up really easily. It's hard for them to really chip away at people. Uh, stuff like that. Alright, and I think now I'm going to go into the rankings for individual maps. And so we're going to start out with Outlaw Camp. And for each of these rankings, I'll have the map up on the side and as well as the rankings so you can see it during the video. So on Outlaw Camp, I have at number one, I have El Primo. And then I have two at Shelly. I think one of the main things with this map is there's a decent amount of cover. This is probably the second most cover as far as bounty maps go with Snake Prairie being number one. So it really favors a lot of medium to close range brawlers. So this is where you see El Primo is really good on this map. It's easy for him to, he can either sneak up on people on the sides or he can be lurking in the middle. And then it's also really easy for him to jump onto other brawlers and really, you know, brawlers that he can win 1v1s with easily. And once he's on top of them, it's really hard for them to escape. They can't get away pretty much. This is where Shell is really good too. And same with throwers are also good because they can either, you know, discover who's in the grass or they can be behind those walls and shoot them or throw their sticks, whatever. Crow's still good. And then you find the long range coming in. Brock, Ricochet, Colt at 789. They're definitely decent here. Uh, probably not as strong. They're still able to sort of sit back and get kills, but it's also easier to reach them a bit as well. And then Spike is pretty good here as well. Uh, I think there's actually a lot of good options on this map. And then until you really get to probably 13 and below, those are probably the brawlers I wouldn't use on Outlaw Camp. I really don't think, I'm really not a big fan of Bo, pretty much ever, honestly. I think he sort of needs to be reworked. Piper's just okay. Poco, people do group up some, but I think there's so much health here. Poco's really bad versus El Primo's and Bulls and Shelly's uh, that it's hard for Poco to really get many kills. So I think that's where Poco struggles a little bit. Same with Jesse, just doesn't deal enough damage. Mortis doesn't deal enough damage and dies too easily, especially versus all those heavy, high health guys. Same with Pam, it's hard for Pam to really, I think, get that damage on this map. All right, and then going to the next map, we're gonna go to Snake Prairie. Uh, Snake Prairie is a very unique map. I really love it. I really hope they actually do like a smash and grab map, really similar to Snake Prairie. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, but as far as rankings, Crow is really good here. Crow is really great at scouting people. Um, and this is where I also find throwers are good too, is they can scout really easily. And then because there's so much grass, people end up grouping up a lot. And that's where throwers can really take advantage of that. And they can often hit multiple people with their supers and with their normal attacks even. And then, you know, similar heavy health guys are gonna be pretty decent here at the least, especially early game. If you find your team has a lot of heavy health guys, try not to blow up too much cover, try not to blow up too much grass, as that's gonna really favor you. Um, you really sort of need that for those heavy guys. That's where they're good on this map, is when they're hidden, and it's they can sneak up on people really easily. So that's where Bull and El Primo is good, Shelly's good. I find some other mid-range people like Nita to be not as good since they don't deal damage very fast. Um, same with Tara, it can be hard for Tara to really compete with those brawlers as they sort of out damage Tara at close range. Um, Poco is not bad, can sort of scout out similar. Same with Spike, also pretty good at scouting out. Um, good supers. Brock, not bad. Ricochet, okay. Colt, okay. You know, they can sort of sit back some and they're going to be a lot better in the late game. Early game, they might struggle a little bit. Late game, they are pretty strong. Same with Piper, strong late game, but really bad early game. Similar to Bo. And then Mortis, just not very good because there's so many heavies on this map. Um, same with Pam and Jesse, it's hard for them to deal damage fast. All right, then going into the next map, Shooting Star. So this is the most long range map, so it really, really heavily favors long range brawlers. On this map, I honestly probably wouldn't use anyone past six. So I have Brock at one, and then it goes Crow, because Crow really complements long range brawlers really well. And then Piper at three, Colt at four, Ricochet at five, and Bo at six. 
I really probably wouldn't use anyone past those six brawlers. You can maybe use Mortis. Um, besides that, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't use anyone else. I really think it's just a matter of out sniping people. It's whichever team can sort of out snipe. Although if you do have a crow, it can make it a little easier. If you're a crow, you just want to sort of annoy people and not get super aggressive and just make it easy for your long range guys. Uh, it's definitely very long range heavy map. It's really hard for anyone else to excel here. There's just really nowhere to hide. That's basically what it boils down to. And it's just going to come down to who can hit more shots and you know who can get the shots at the right times. All right, then going on to Star Gulch. Star Gulch is probably maybe the second most heavily favored towards long range of these. There is, it starts out with some coverage. There's the four squares sort of in the middle. And, you know, but they often end up getting destroyed almost always at least two or two to three of them are always destroyed a lot of times four of them are destroyed so that's where this map is again really heavily favored towards long range similar to shooting star so a lot of the same brawlers at the top the exact same top six actually um and then you there are some medium range here is can be usable so that's probably the one difference between star Ghost and shooting star is you can use spike barley dynamite jesse Nita, you can use those brawlers. Um, and you can probably keep going all the way, maybe until Pam. I probably wouldn't use anyone past 14 on this map. Um, but it definitely, I would try and stick to the ones in the top six. Those are really good here. They're much better than the other brawlers here. All right, then going on to Temple Ruins. So Temple Ruins is sort of a mix. There's a decent amount of cover. There's a decent amount of grass. A lot of it does end up getting destroyed, especially in the middle. So, you know, the last minute to minute and a half of the game, there's probably not going to be much cover. So this is where you see a similar top seven. So the one difference here is Pam. So I think Pam is actually really good on this map. And one of the things I find is her turret really, really complements long range brawlers. And it can actually stay alive decently well on this map. And as well, it's easy for her to get a good amount of hits, a good amount of damage. Pam is actually not bad versus other long range brawlers as she has a lot of health. So it's hard for them to kill her very fast. And she actually has a decent amount of range. So she can get pretty, she can stay her distance and still damage a lot of them. Um, but she sort of just chips away at them. It's hard for her to really do a lot of damage. So but the one thing I find is if you can put her turrets sort of on the back line, sort of behind like that, uh, the L shape there, if you can put it behind one of those, and then it'll really complement your long range guys. They can sort of step into it when they need to and step out and sort of keep their spacing. And then it really helps them just keep their health up and they can under, they can deal a lot of pressure. They can take a lot of pressure. Um, and yeah, throwers are actually pretty good on this map as well. So Dynamite and Barley are good here. Um, there's a decent amount of cover. A lot of, some people like using the double thrower and Mortis tactic on this map where they use Mortis to you know, get the star right away and get a 1-0 lead. And then they go all the way back to their spawn and they automatically have an advantage and they sort of just spawn camp. And I really hate facing this strategy. It honestly makes it a boring gameplay. It makes it slow, but it is sort of legit. Um, some people do use it really well. So that's where throwers are pretty good on this map. They make it hard. They can really spawn trap you really well and they can also are good at getting you out of your spawn as well. And then uh, moving on, actually I will say this on this map. With Temple Ruins, you can probably use a lot of different brawlers here. I don't think any brawler is specifically really weak, but I probably would stick away from the short range guys. I probably wouldn't use El Primo Mortis Bull. Just, you know, early game, it's, you can get, if you get, have a really strong early game, you can do well with them, but towards the end, it's gonna be really hard. If you find yourself behind at the end, you're probably pretty much lost if you have those three brawlers. Uh, they're just not as strong in the end game with all the cover blown up. All right, and then going into Terracotta Square. Terracotta Square sort of favors the long range brawlers, but it, there's a decent amount of grass as well. And it's hard for long range brawlers to specifically always um, stopping flanking. So that's the one thing with Terracotta Square is it can be sort of easy to flank. So that's where you find El Primo all the way up at six and Bull at seven, as they can sort of go along the side grasses and that's where they can sort of surprise people and they can make it you know hard for them to 
um, really establish a position. It's hard for them to really establish where they want to be, but the long range is still best here in general. Piper at two, Brock at one, Colt at three, Ricochet four, Crow still pretty good. Mortis is not bad here because of all those long range. Mortis can sneak around in the grass and is once Mortis is close is actually pretty good versus you know the Brocks and the Pipers and the Colts. Once Mortis is close though. Uh, throwers are not bad here. This is probably a map as well where almost anything goes. Um, I probably wouldn't use anything 15 and below. I probably, well you might be able to use Spikes okay, but I probably wouldn't use Jesse at all. I wouldn't use Poco. I wouldn't use Pam. They're just not that great here. It's People don't really group up for Poco and Pam. They don't group up close enough to get a lot of value all the time. Um, they're not going to be able to out damage people very fast. They're not going to be able to use their super a lot. That's where I find they struggle. Um, so overall, it's sort of a balanced map where you can have a couple long range brawlers and then maybe some close range ones as well. And then Cabbage Patch. I really like Cabbage Patch. Cabbage Patch also ends up being really long range. Similar to Star Ghost, a lot of the structures end up getting destroyed. So this is where you really see a similar top six to some of the others. Has Brock one, Piper, and then Ricochet, and then Colt, and then Crow, and then Bow. I think that's gonna be the general order for a lot of these maps. Because uh, that cover does end up getting destroyed. I do have Ricochet actually higher than Colt here. I think there are some really good bounce shot opportunities, especially if you have Ricochet on the right side. I think there's if you learn those bounce shots, you can actually make it hard for people to hide pretty much on the whole, you know, right half. Uh, Ricochet is definitely good here. Pretty much long range is good here. I probably wouldn't use anyone past eight on this map. You can use Spike Fine. Pam is okay, but I definitely wouldn't use 11 Beyond. I would advise sticking to the top six. Um, you can sort of use Barley and Dynamite. Not bad here. There are Especially early game, since there's enough walls where they can really force people to go in certain lanes um, and it makes it hard for them to shoot. But once those walls start getting destroyed, it makes it a lot harder for Barley and Dynamite to be very good. Alright, and then last but not least, Groundhog Burrow. So this map actually, I'm not as sure on for the rankings. I haven't played this map very much. Honestly, I think I've only played it once or twice and even then I didn't play it that much. But I asked some other top players what they thought. And this is sort of what I came up with. I think Crow is still really good here. And then with all the walls, I think throwers are really good here. Um, it makes it easier for them to really pin people and they can sort of, you know, it makes it hard for them to be shot. Obviously behind the walls and they can, you know, force them to certain directions and force them into their teammates. That happens a lot. I think mid-range and heavy brawlers are really good here. Especially ones that, you know, again, like throwers. And then also that can go around corners like Spike. I think Shell is really good here, El Primo, Bull. Um, I think this is sort of a diverse map. It's going to end up depending on whether a lot of structures are being blown up and you know how well people are hiding. I think there's enough cover that medium range and um, I think there's enough cover that almost anything can be used here. Although I might shy away towards having too many long range brawlers on this map. I think you might just want one at most. Maybe two if you're destroying a lot of cover, like if you have a Brock and a Colt, maybe you can get away with it towards the end game, um, stuff like that. But I do think this is a pretty balanced map and a lot of different brawlers do work here. All right, guys, so those are all of my rankings. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, liked what you saw. Let me know how you would do the rankings differently, what you guys thought. All right, thanks for watching and catch you next time.